a lot of people get infatuated with their goals, but they don't fall in love with the commitments required to get them there. In fact, just a few quick data points. When it comes to New Year's resolutions, 91% of New Year's resolutions fail, and almost 50% of them, according to research, fail by the end of January. And I don't know about you, I've been there. And today what we want to talk about is how do you follow through better on what you say you want to do? And so I want you to open it up, Steve. I've been in, I was able to get inside of your program as you were on the 70 game winning streak, as you were accumulating all these things. And one thing that I never heard you talk about was the goal of winning. Can you talk about your philosophy there around what actually drove results? I think everybody wants to win, no matter it's sports or business. I think that's the obvious goal is to win and whatever winning looks like in your world. But ultimately, winning is an outcome that you can't control. So we didn't focus on outcomes that we can't control. We, we focused on things we could control, and that was our process, our commitments, our day-to-day -day habits that would then drive the behaviors that would produce the results. And so instead of just sitting around and talking about our goals of winning, we really focused on what it took to be a winner. And those were the commitments. And, and it was easy to talk about at the beginning of the season when everybody's excited. But really, I think what separated our, our kids from a lot of, of, of our opponents was that they continued their commitments even when the motivation, so to speak, wore off. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really a key to us because let's be honest, at the beginning of the season, no team sits around and says, hey, our goal this year is to go two and seven. Like everybody's got the same goals to win, to win a state championship, to win in business. Everybody's kind of got the same goals, but the separator to me is who's willing to commit to the process and commit to the behaviors that's going to drive the results. And then who's going to stick with those commitments. Cause that to me is the difference. And one thing just to go further. So just to clarify, you're not saying, Hey, goals are, are garbage. You know, goals aren't worth it. How do you value goals? And to me, goals kind of set the vision. And, and everybody knew what the goal was. In our football program, the goal was to win a state championship. And I don't think it's it's wrong to maybe talk about that or address it once. It's the people that continue to focus on these big goals and then don't focus that same time and energy on the commitments that's going to take to reach those goals. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not saying that winning doesn't matter. Winning matters. And it didn't make it less important to us. But ultimately, like I said, those are things that you couldn't control. So let's focus on the things we can control, and that's our commitments. Well said. And so when it comes to helping people actually follow through on it, a few things that we've worked on to go from the idea of a goal to actually executing are, number one, we have to name it. We've got to get clear on what is the commitment that we're going to do and make it measurable. Can we make it so it's clear that either it got done or it didn't? Third one is schedule it. Put it in the calendar so that it actually happens. And the last thing that we found is have somebody that's going to help hold you accountable to it. Because by the nature of being humans, I think this follow through doesn't come naturally, especially in our world where there's so many distractions that are pulling at us. If we don't get serious about those key things, it is so easy for us to say we're going to do something and then not follow through. So those are a few key things that we use and help our clients with to actually follow through on what they say they're going to do. One thing though that I wanted to bring up to you, when it comes to commitments and following through on what we say we're going to do, after that shine wears off of the newness of the idea mm. of a goal or something that we want to get, um, after that wears off, and then that little person voice starts to fill in the blanks of you're not you know, losing the weight fast enough, you're not seeing the progress quickly enough as what you should be. How do you address that? Yeah, well, we love the term aggressive patience. And it falls back to our one of our core stories of watering the bamboo. And the aggressive patience is aggressive in the process, aggressive into the commitments, but patient in the results. So you go back to your stats about the New Year's resolutions. Well, a lot of them revolve around health and losing weight and exercising more and eating well. And what ends up happening a lot of people is they do that for one or two weeks and it's hard. It's hard to get back into working out and you're sore and you're tired and you want to have that bag of chips. And so you do that and you commit for a week or two, but then you look in the mirror and nothing's changed. 
And a month later, nothing's changed. And even sometimes six months later, <laughs> nothing's changed. So it's easy to give up on those commitments because you're not seeing the outcome as fast as you want it to. But we need to be aggressively patient. We need to continue to aggressively attack our commitments and understanding that they rarely come as quick as we want. So we have to be patient in the results. So I just want to maybe throw it back to you one more time and just ask you, like you get to work with some of the highest performers in our country. Of all the things that we talked about today, what separates some of those people? Whether it's the teams that you get to work with or the individuals, when you look at those people and they're in the spots that they are, what is the separator? When it comes to commitments, I would say that they've recognized that alone, they're pretty, they're, they're not consistent as what they would want to be. Mm -hmm. Alone, they're not as strong, relatively weak at times. And what they've done is they've built an environment around them to not let them fail. Mm. They've built a structure in their home. Uh, they built a team that is as passionate to them so that when they have their low days, which even on the outside, some of these people seem like they always are living in a great way, but they have their dungeon days. But even on their dungeon days, they've surrounded themselves with an environment that won't let them fail. And so I think that's what really stands out to me is how they have, number one, recognized, I'm not a superhero. Like I'm going to need support along this way to follow through. And they stack their environment up to be able to help them to execute. I love it. So that's what we want from everybody is to be your very best, be the high performer that you're meant to be. And we really firmly believe that it's not about the goals we set, but more about the commitments that we're willing to dive into each and every day, even on the days we don't want to, even mm -hmm. when that little person voice gets loud, even when we're not seeing the results as fast as you can. So whatever those commitments are, we encourage you to keep them and keep pushing forward.